Hallo zusammen, mein Name ist Ich dachte, ursprünglich wollte ich den Vortrag auf Deutsch machen, aber ich glaube, mit der Codierung werden wir so viele Probleme haben. And that's the good reason that I should speak in English. Could you switch the key or? Ah, okay, now it works. This was just a few, a very short list uh, of the names I see on the post that is coming to my home on my cards uh, from different organizations and companies. But this is how it should be written. Okay, and sometimes I even then I see this text. My name is Miroslav Shedivy. Uh, this is the first line over there. There is how you pronounce it with the IPA. And the second line is how you can type it correctly using the Compose key. I work at the Salute GmbH in Karlsruhe in southern Germany, which is the silver sponsor here at uh, Pycon DE. Um, we are standing behind the large, one of the largest uh, price comparing uh, websites in Germany, Billiga.de. And if you would like to come to a city where both bicycle and car were born, uh, and where we drink both beer and wine from half liter glasses, uh, speak to me or to my colleagues afterwards. So what are we going to talk about? Uh, we are going to talk about Python. So how to work with names or general strings uh, in Python. So comparing string bytes, encoding, uh, normalizing, uh, case folding, so uppercase, lowercase, sorting, alphabetical sorting, and regular expressions. And on the other hand, how to work with names on the websites or in the databases. Um, the concept of first, last names, uh, middle names, uh, and uh, how you should proceed with allowed characters in the names. So, Python 3 <coughs> gave us uh, the finally the great uh, distinction between strings and bytes. What is a string? String is a series of characters. Each character is one of the over one million code points of Unicode. And this is what work, uh, what you have in the working memory. You don't really mind how one character looks like if it is one byte or several bytes long, because it is in the memory, you access it, you see the length of this character as one, and it offers you over one million code points, so most alphabets and a lot of symbols that are used uh, all around the world. On the other hand, we have bytes which is something that you write into a file on your disk or you send over network. And this is something that has only 256 possible combinations. So we have to find a way how to encode our strings from the characters into these bytes. Uh, if your name is Chuck Norris, you need no encoding. But anyway, in Python, if you take the string, which is string in, uh, in uh, quotes, um, without anything before, uh, and you encode it, you convert it from string into bytes. There is a small b before um, this uh, uh, quotes. And on the other hand, if you uh, read some bytes, you just decode them and you get the string. In this case, uh, this is only a pure ASCII, so the length of both the string and of the bytes uh, is uh, 12. Uh, the length is 12, so there is no problem, and this is how it would work actually also in uh, Python 2. Um, but where uh, there comes a difference, for example, Müller, German name that contains a U uh, da with two dots, which converts into uh, bytes using two bytes. You need two bytes, so this is the number two and the number three on the right hand. Uh, Python uses as a default UTF-8, so you don't really have to take care of that as long as you are the master of all your of your whole code and uh, your whole data. Um, this works also for some other characters. For example, Chinese, this is not a last name. This is Ni Hao, so hello in Chinese. And so using UTF-8, we take our two uh, characters as a string and we convert them to six characters as a, um, as a byte. And you can write it on the, the disk or send to the, uh, send over the network. Okay. Uh, Default in Python is UTF-8, but we can use also other encodings because there are plenty, plenty, plenty of uh, encodings out there. ASCII uh, is the basic one. Uh, in this case, uh, this name uh, contains only ASCII characters, so there is not a problem. If you have some German name with a U uh, with DRSs, uh, you can use, for example, Latin 1, and then encoding uh, this U with two dots converted to one byte, and vice versa, you take the bytes and then decode them. Uh, there is no information about the encoding uh, in the bytes, so you have to know what you are doing with it. Um, my, in my case, uh, my last name Shedivi comes from Czechoslovakia. It means gray-haired. Don't believe that the last name means anything. Um, 
in this case the capital S with Karen and the Y with uh, acute uh, they can convert into a single uh, byte uh, in Latin 2 but I cannot use it in uh, Latin 1 and vice versa Latin 1 is for, for languages like German, French, Italian, Spanish, West European. Latin 2 is for Latin-based East Euro Central European languages, Polish, Hungarian, Czech, Slovak, and Slovenian, and a few other languages. So, this is what I see sometimes when I get mail. Actually, they upgraded uh, since two years. No. When this appeared, I uh, tweeted uh, them that you have all my contact data. You can contact me. I know how to solve this. <laughs> they... <laughs> They didn't contact me, but nowadays uh, all the packages I get uh, from them, they removed the question mark and the Y at the end, so I am just Miroslav space space Edif. You have seen that at the beginning. So, uh, the, the question is, how is this possible? Because on their website I entered Shedevi correctly, and it is printed correctly on the website, but on the packages there is a question mark. Where does this question mark come from? If I take my last name as a string and I encode it into Latin 2, um, I will get something that is represented correctly, this, uh, these uh, six characters. If I encode it into Latin 1, because this is a company based in Germany, uh, probably this is what they are doing. Uh, if it, they use Python and they encode it uh, to Latin 1, they will get an exception because the, let, the character, the first character, this S uh, with Karen, the sh, cannot be encoded in Latin 1. But they still manage to send me packages. There is a switch that you can encode in Latin 1 and then you say, okay, if there is an error, don't raise an exception, but replace it. And the default, it will be replaced with a question mark. So actually you can do, you can, there is, more, I think you can raise an exception, you can replace it, question mark is the only possibility, and you can, uh, another possibility is just to skip the character. So this is how it is possible. So please, if you can, use UTF-8. Um, something different is, uh, this is some random airline company in Germany. Um, I wanted to buy a ticket, and I wrote my last name, and they told me, uh, you can only enter letters in the adult's last name field. Sorry, my last name consists of letters. But what is a letter? You can do this in Python 3. You can write a word with some beyond ASCII characters equal and then, then the string. But you cannot give uh, uh, name your variable a smiley or dot or question mark. How does Python know about that? Does Python know all these characters with all the Karens and Chinese characters? You can use Chinese characters for that. Um, there is a category. So if you, category of character. If you import unit, Unicode data, which is in standard Python library, uh, then you can ask for the category and the name of a character. So for example, I have here a list of some A's, uh, umlauts, uh, Schaffeses. There is even capital Schaffeses, which exists in German. You see it is a little bit wider. Uh, there is Dodd and a Smiley. And then with this short program, I can just get the character, its category, and its name. So what you see in the first column, it is the name, the, the, how it looks like. And then the second uh, column with these L's, the, these two characters, it is the category of the character. And if it is an L at the beginning, capital L, it means that it's a letter. And U or L afterwards, it means uppercase or, or lowercase. And this is how Python knows that, okay, everything what that contains... Um, Ca uh, ca characters uh, that are categorized as letters, you can use them as variable names. Pay attention, if you copy random code from Stack Overflow and it, it doesn't work really exactly as you would expect, check whether some variable names are maybe Cyrillic letters that are very similar or identical looking to the Latin alphabet. So you can have an A or A, they look the same in uh, both uh, Cyrillic and Latin. But they are two different characters, so the variable name is different. So this is how you can actually security through obscurity. If you want to make your code obscure, you just random, randomly, con uh, consistently switch uh, the characters, some variable characters for uh, Cyrillic. Um, okay, and, and then Latin small letter A, it is the name of the character, like it is stored officially at Unicode. This is the list of all uh, categories. So you see all the L's, it is those letters, then N's are some numbers, punctuation, and so on. Um, there is, in operating system, there is usually this, this is, uh, usually this uh, character map uh, um, app that allows you to find a character, and down you see this uh, 160, U1, 
no, sorry, Unicode 0160, this is uh, hexadecimal, Latin capital letter as with Karen, and this is what allows you to uh, use other characters in your code if you are not able to type them directly or if you want to keep your code ASCII. So, for example, what I can do with my last name, I just backslash u and the uh, hexadecimal code 0160, and for the y it is backslash u 00fd, and this is pure ASCII, but it uh, translates uh, into my last name. Uh, other possibility is to use the name. This is even better to read, probably. Like, you can better remember if you see Latin capital letter S with Karen than to remember what the uh, 01600 code means. And this way you can really enter some fancy stuff uh, from the charm up that you like. And in your code, you can still see what it should contain when uh, it is printed. Case folding. This is uppercase, lowercase. Um, it's simple. You have the dot upper to get it one way and dot lower to get it our other way. But there are a few bugs that don't, not really bugs, but something that doesn't uh, work uh, correctly with what is in the reality of our human languages. For example, the shaft SS. If you do shaft SS, uppercase, this is the lowercase, and you convert it to uppercase, you will get an SS capital. Uh, if you then convert it to lowercase again, then you get an SS lowercase, so you don't get the shaf SS again. Uh, on the other hand, this works. If you take the shaf SS uppercase, you can lowercase it to into the lowercase up, the shaf SS. And there is one more bug, uh, but this is a bug in our in our Latin alphabet. And there is one of the 26 letters that is actually wrong, and Python does it wrong. Which one is it? I. You see this? There is a lowercase i with a dot that converts into an uppercase i without dot. Does anyone understand Turkish here? <laughs> they have i with a dot, lowercase, uppercase is e, and the uh, i, uh, lowercase and uppercase without dot is e. How should Turkish people convert their text between uppercase and lowercase if we have broken their alphabet? <laughs> there is a way. I will have a look at this ICU uh, library a little bit later. You can do that correctly, but not with a standard dot upper and dot lower. Normalizing. We have two character, uh, two strings. The one is süß, like sweet. It can be also a last name in uh, uh, in German. And the word two looks the same, but it is normalized. What is the difference between these two words? The first one, I've just printed all the characters. The first, süß, has three characters. S. U and the shaft SS. Um, the word two contains of has four characters. So if you compare these two words, they are no equal. The length is not equal. Uh, and if you access different characters, they are not equal as well. But when you print it, it looks the same. What you see in the word two, the character number two, this DRS is, um, it is not my mistake. It is actually really offset by one because this uh, combining DRS doesn't have a width. If you want to combine, um, to put some dead keys or some extra extra marks uh, on your letter, you put it afterwards, and then um, it doesn't have a bra uh, width, so it means that U and the DRS is it combines together um, to the U uh, with two dots. Um, Python is in this case is uh, very smart that you cannot normalize and denormalize anything. So, for example, what I can do, I can take a shaf SS and then put a uh, combining DRS after it. But when I denormalize it, so I want to get the shorter version of the word, I don't get a character. There is no character with shaf SS with DRS on it. So, um, the, it knows that, okay, you can combine only characters uh, that are possible to combine. Because otherwise, you would get something like this. Which is uh, answer, uh, uh, stack overflow answer for a question: How can I use regex uh, to parse HTML? And you see here at the end, this is actually some random character with a lot, a lot, a lot of combining uh, characters afterwards. So then uh, another topic is uh, alphabetic sorting. Um, these, these are some letters. Imagine these are the first letters of some names. Um, when you sort them uh, using Python just like this, first you get all the ASCII uh, capital letter, low uppercase, then ASCII lowercase, like AOU, then you get uh, the umlauts uh, uppercase, then the shaf SS, then the umlauts lowercase, then some uh, letters, uh, characters from Central Europe, like the ESH, and the 
uh, capital Shaf SS comes at the end because it was added to Unicode a little bit later. So this is not how you want to sort alphabetically. And I don't really, I, my last name is Shedivi, I don't really enjoy at conferences to be always at the end of the alphabetic list of uh, the speakers because in Czech and Slovak, Esh is between S and T. But I don't know, in German it's probably different, in English is again different, in Hungarian is probably different, we are going to have a look at it. But if you use this, this is probably not what you want. Uh, if you want to sort alphabetically in the German logic, logic, uh, you import locale, then change the locale to DEDE -D -E, UTF-8, and then we sort it and you see that the A's, they land just between A and B, and the uppercase, lowercase letters are also together. On the other hand, when you do something with Swedish, um, the umlauts, are o umlaut and the O with uh, the, um, uh, the circle, they are at the end of alphabet after Z. So if you uh, sort uh, the Swedish way, it will look a little bit different. In Hungarian, there is CS, this ch uh, letter. It is ch sound, but it is CS. And alphabetically, it comes after C. So CV, like Zwickli, and Cipers, they are in that order, because CS is not between CR and CT, it is after CZ. In Czech and Slovak, as I told you, SH is between S and T, CH is between C and D, and we have this letter H, CH, that is between H and I. And this is also sometimes uh, problematic, because usually in Czech and Slovak, if you see CH, it's H, but sometimes there are composed words that one word ends with a C, the other one uh, uh, begins with an H, and then it is not the H. These are two C and H uh, letters uh, next to each other. So even th this doesn't always work correctly. French, uh, there are some rules, some French official dictionaries that use this rule that they sort everything alphabetically, but when it comes to accents, they sort them uh, starting from the end of the word. So you first sort all the last syllables, then the before last, and then uh, the other way around. The problem with locale is that it is connected to the process. So if you change the locale, the whole process has been changed. So it means if you have some process, some web server, and there is, there is some user that uh, wants to see a list of uh, the names uh, sorted the German way, Swedish way, the Czech way, and then if you set locale, then the whole process will be changed. This is not what you want. Uh, that's why it's better to use this e ICU, International Components for Unicode, and then you create an instance in that language, and then you can sort um, in that language without uh, changing the locale of the process. And this is also what can be used uh, to uppercase, lowercase, uh, the Turkish characters. Now, regular expressions. Um, let's say we want to extract from this text the word München. München. How can we do it? If we extract every s all letters A to Z, then we get only the M and the N. We ignore the U. When we use the backslash V, oh sorry, backslash W, backslash W, then we will get even the numbers, but we don't want the numbers. So we want to find a way how to extract everything that is a character. For that, we have we will have to use the third-party library regex that. Um, works the same like uh, the standard RE, uh, but that allows you with the backslash P uh, in the curly braces to include the category of the letter that you want. So for example, the capital L is everything that is letter. With LU you have uppercase letters, with LL you have lowercase letters. And this is how you can do it. Okay, I came here for Python, but I stayed for the names. How many of you have any problems with like encoding or ordering or first name, last name? Okay, I think that I have here all the uh, Python uh, participants that uh, are not, have no ASCII names. Happy to see that. Who of you have simply first name, last name? Okay. First name, middle name, last name? Uh-huh. First name, patronymic surname, patronymic last name. Uh, surname, metronymic, patronymic surname. Okay, this is more the Spanish and Portuguese way of doing the things. Uh, there are also... For example, in the northern countries, for example, Iceland has this uh, concept of the first name of the father, for own first name and the first name of the father with the son. So, for example, if someone is called Sigur and his father is Johan, then he's Sigur Johansson, but they never call him Mr. Johansson. They're, they, his name starts with an S, so alphabetically he's sorted after Sigur, and he's Mr. Sigur Johansson. Last name, first name, any Hungarians or East uh, Asians here? So again, this is not last name if it comes first. 
any kings or popes here? <laughs> Vine to no, just simple name. Yeah. And then imagine all these von und zu and uh, all these aristocratic titles. Sometimes they are part of the name, sometimes they are sorted, sometimes not. And even worse are all the doctors, because if you, g you are a doctor in Germany, you're duct you get it as a part of your last name, but it's when there is a first name that it comes in between. So now imagine that in all the languages it's different, very different. But maybe if you are here at the conference, you have seen we have sorted you according to the first name. Actually, we took the whole string of your name and then just, okay, this is your full name, no matter whether you are doctor or first name, last name. Any, anyway, you, you order your name, it will be just one uh, string or one uh, field uh, in the database, and there is something like, how should we call you? This is probably, I think, the best way to, to store names, because with all the first name, last names, uh, it simply doesn't work. Okay, there isn't. Except Mr. T, he said, okay, what is your first name? He said, first name is Mr., my middle name is period, and my last name is T. <laughs> so don't, when you do something with the names, don't assume anything. Don't put random limit on their length. So if there is something like, uh, what, type the fourth letter of your last name, and I know there is someone here with three letters last name. There is someone with two letters only. Yeah. Okay. So there are even longer names on the other way or this way. <laughs> I, even I think in this case, uh, they did a um, mistake uh, in his name in Wikipedia and nobody noticed it, even himself. No? <laughs> Don't use stop words. Uh, if it is an uh, offensive word in your language, it's probably a normal name in other language. Family members don't have necessarily the same family name. Yes, all the male members of my family are called Šedivi. The females are Šediva because it is an adjective in Czech and in Slovak, as I said, gray-haired. And uh, also in Czech and Slovak, we put ova at the end of female names if the uh, last name uh, of uh, the man is, uh, is a substantive. Um, different transcriptions from non-Latin alphabets. So, for example, you know, Anton Pavlovich Čecho, there are plenty, plenty of, in every language, they tr transcribe the Russian name differently. The other way around as well. Uh, on, in my passport, I was in Russia in the past uh, few years uh, twice, and I have two visa uh, for Russia, and my, should give me my last name, is written in Cyrillic alphabet differently. In both ways. So if there is some Soviet, uh, sorry, uh, some Russian organization that, uh, that takes care of me, they see me as two different pe persons, probably. Uh, Chinese, the same and other languages uh, as well um, men they can change their family names too so if you ask for the maiden name or nay it's probably not uh, what is applicable to men as well and one letter name is probably not an initial so Benoit B Mandelbrot is B is actually only a letter B and not uh, not a whole uh, not, not an abbreviation of a of a name so probably you should expect that everything that is printable is fine and uh, is a part of letter because you cannot uh, say that only letters are allowed because there are some dashes, there are some apostrophes. So there are people who think that they have problems with uh, their names, uh, even if they are completely ASCII. If your computer, if your program, your application has problem with Mr. Null, please see me after the talk. There are ways to get null into the database uh, without problems. I have seen somewhere, so someone told me yesterday that uh, someone in the USA wanted to have a car uh, plate uh, with null so that uh, they do, he, he cannot be entered into the database if he ha should get a speed ticket. <laughs> the problem was that he got all the speed tickets of everyone that couldn't be, where the license plate was not readable. <laughs> So, if your database has problem with null, you will probably have problems uh, with uh, these names as well. Okay, uh, how about uh, names of streets and cities? Because cities are s and streets are sometimes called after people as well. Uh, who knows what is the most uh, common street name in Germany? Hmm? Ausgang? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can find it quite often on the streets. If you park your car somewhere and remember I park here, no, you are not going to find it again. On the other hand, what, there are a few names of uh, streets uh, in Germany that are, you don't find them in Germany, but you find them, for example, on American uh, com lists of uh, companies, directories of companies. For example, Hauptstrabe. Huh? You will find it quite often. Um, there are places, so you don't have to uh, limit the length of the city at least three characters. No, don't do that, because all this is somewhere in uh, Scandinavia. Y, uh, somewhere in France, uh, the habitants are called Ypsilonia. <laughs> and there are also other extremes. Oh, no, okay, of course, this. So if you have a question, what is your mother's maiden name or where were you born, at least six characters should contain uppercase, lowercase, and digits, and so on. No. Okay, and there are places like Hlamvarpuch, Wingech, Gerach, Windrebuch, Quantasilio, Gogogoch. That is even longer. Or, okay, this is fiction. A uh, very famous uh, uh, Polish movie where the main person called Grzegorz Brzezinski-Szykiewicz and the place he pretends to live in is Chrzanciszewaszice, Powiat The face of the German soldier <laughs> looks like that for the whole two minutes after that. And even sometimes you even don't have addresses. So in Iceland you just show, uh, uh, draw a map <laughs> and the letter will arrive. Um, I am o almost in the half of my talk now, um, but now I'm going to go really fast because this is just a list uh, of falsehoods uh, programmers believe about names. So I'm going to let you read it, all of that, because every time you try to write a program that as assumes that, ah, okay, of course, this has to be like that. No, it can be everything. Okay, the last assume, no, people don't always have names. So, what to do? Please respect your users' names and don't break the locale when you program. So import this ICU third-party library. Um, when you work with bytes from the network or file, read these bytes as soon as possible, convert them to a string uh, using the right encoding. And on the other hand, when exporting, convert them as fast as possible, uh, as late as possible. UTF school is cool. For you. UTF eight is cool. Python three is cool. And be cool too, please. And please, telling the user your name is invalid only because of laziness, ignorance, and spitefulness prevents you from handling their input is not cool. Be nice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miro. Do we have questions? I just want to add. Microphone, please. I, no. I just want to add that in Portuguese, we have the mother name and the father name, but in a different order than in Spanish. <laughs> but there is no difference between how a mother, a female name and uh, father's uh, male's names uh, sounds, so it's not like in Slovakia. Yeah. Anyone else has uh, their grandmother's surname? <laughs> Anyone has no name? I have not seen such name pages without names. Okay. No. Anybody has questions about their own names? <laughs> Excellent talk. Thank uh, you. Have you ever got a chance to work with Indian languages? Because there are some characters in the language, letters, the characters. So does this applicable like ICU and Unicode libraries, does this applicable even for Indian languages? In uh, Which languages? Indian. Indian. Uh, yes. The, like if, we, we have multiple languages, like we have some 2000 languages in the country. If you have, if you have, uh, if your, if the characters of these languages are in Unicode, then they are defined category as uh, letters. So you can use them, you can parse them actually as letters. Okay. Uh, even if you, someone used these uh, Japanese letters as uh, smileys, uh, it was the she, she, I think, uh, then these are letters. Yeah. Good. Any more questions? Anyone? Everyone wants to go to the lunch, I understand. <laughs> I guess. So one question for me: uh, Any advice about how to uh, approach sorting where we when we don't know the local? 
you probably you can use this U, the US the, uh, English sorting or any sorting because then it will be always better than the primitive Python like the simple par Python sorting that uh, sorts is according to Unicode because at least English knows uh, that uh, uppercase lowercase should go together and very probably Shaf SS will be somewhere at the end of the alphabet but at least Sh will be hopefully somewhere <laughs> before Shaf SS <laughs> um, so you said that we should know what the what the encoding of the bytes is that we're loading yeah. What do we do when we don't? Mm, you try. <laughs> you have a look. <laughs> huh? There are there are some encodings that can be uh, load that can be detected. Uh, UTF-8, for example, has some security mechanism. Um, but uh, for the others, if you know which language it should be in, then you can. Actually, tell okay in German I allow only these 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 um, characters, so there should be no other. But nowadays, if I write something in German, I sign it automatically. There is a character that is no in not in German, so I will probably break your program. But with Finnish, you can do probably you have probably no problems. <laughs> okay, I think that's all the questions we had. Thank you, Mira, again. Thank you.